Aloha everyone and welcome back to Kaimana Conservation, the channel where we talk about the ocean and all things ocean related. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know me, my name is Jessica and I'm a professional marine biologist that lives and works on the island of Maui in Hawaii. Uh, today we're going to be talking about something kind of fun um, because I get the questions all the time um, and I get the assumptions all the time. So today we're going to be addressing the top five assumptions about marine biologists that are not true. And because of today's topic, I'm actually wearing my shirt. You can't really see it. Whoop, there we go. Trust me, I'm a marine biologist, which I thought would be funny and perfect for today. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and dive right into it. The top five assumptions about being a marine biologist. So assumption number one about marine biologists is that we spend all of our time swimming with dolphins and whales and all of these other cool creatures. Sadly, that is not the case for a variety of reasons, one of which is it just depends on what you're studying and where you're studying, um, or if you're studying. Um, there's, there's a variety of uh, marine biologist jobs after all. Um, but I have several colleagues that never go out on the water at all, let alone in the water. They're laboratory-based scientists. They're studying uh, the chemistry of the ocean, um, or everything is coming in through um, virtual feeds like there's so many different ways that you could study the ocean being out on the water at all isn't necessarily part of the job description um oftentimes it is or you'll get small sections of your job that involve field work where you get to go out and spend an intensive amount of time um at at the ocean or on the ocean or in the ocean um, but it's not all the time sadly it also depends um, on what animals are around you um, I have a lot of colleagues that work in temperate climates or uh, they're just not in the vicinity of the dolphins and whales that we get out here in Hawaii um, and last but not least uh, Maui is actually a perfect example of this it's actually not allowed for you to get into the water with dolphins and whales unless you have very special permitting so um, although there are certain scientists out here that can hop into the water with dolphins and whales and record behaviors and do observations like not every research scientist especially if it's not your area is allowed to just hop into the water with these animals so there's a lot of factors obviously that go into that some careers absolutely have the ability to do that and uh, we're all jealous of them of course um, i've seen dolphins underwater and whales underwater a handful a small handful of times in my life usually it's accidental and I'm there for something else and they just swam past um, but in the on the whole sadly swimming with dolphins and whales is not as common occurrence as people think it is a little bit of a segue from that number two assumption number two is that marine biologists spend a lot of their time out on the ocean not always the case. As a matter of fact, sadly, marine biologists that do research, even if it is on animals in the ocean and they do spend some of their time in the ocean, more often than not, we're doing a lot of office work. And this is pretty hard for me to admit because when I was younger and I wanted to be a marine scientist, the one deciding factor for being that, that type of scientist is that I didn't want a desk job. Alas, here we are, I have a desk job. Um, I spend a good chunk of my time um, at a desk either recording uh, my observations, writing analyses, uh, writing for grants. Um, there's so many things that go behind your time on the ocean. So if you go out and do research on the ocean, Woohoo! Um, especially if you have more than like a couple weeks to do so, that's awesome. That's a really great perk of your job. It's a lot of travel involved usually. Um, however, a majority of your time is actually spent at the desk making sure that everything comes together in order for you to get to the ocean um, for those, those that shorter period of time. So we do unfortunately have a little bit of desk work involved, but in my opinion, it makes everything worth it when you do get to the ocean to do your research. Assumption number three about marine biologists is that we all know how to scuba dive and we all know how to drive a boat. Um, so this is actually kind of a weird one for me to talk about because I am scuba certified and I am a scuba instructor um, and I have used that for my job. Um, however, <laughs> depending on the career that you have, you may never be required to go out onto a boat or to go into the water on scuba gear to collect your samples. Some professions do require you to, so you have to get certified and make sure that you're able to do that. Um, but not not everyone. As a matter of fact, I do have some colleagues um, that work mostly in the laboratory and they actually get really seasick. Um, so they actually do not do well out on the ocean itself, which you guys might think is, uh, I think it's kind of funny and ironic that they're marine biologists 
that can't really be out on the water, but they have an entire career set up where they don't need to go out and be on the boat or be in the water because their studies involve them being predominantly on land. Other marine biologists that uh, do need to be out on the water don't necessarily need to know how to drive the boat, although it is always a good skill to have um, if you have another captain that is doing that job for you. Um, also crewing, uh, some crewing skills. You may need that, you may not, just depending on what is involved with your job. Same with scuba diving. Scuba diving involves you actually being under the water. If you are a marine biologist that focus on intertidal zones or coastal zones, you may never need to go under the water. You may be focusing on the beach side of things, or you might be able to perform all of your studies uh, either on snorkel, or if you're a deep water uh, marine biologist, uh, like a deep ocean marine biologist, you might not ever need to hop into the water, you might be controlling an underwater a uh, an underwater submersible via a remote on a boat. A lot of marine biologists do scuba dive as a hobby, regardless of whether or not it is involved in their career itself. For example, I scuba dive as a hobby right now because I don't really need to be diving in my current position as an education director. And obviously, since I'm working in Aquaria, I have absolutely no need to drive a boat at all. Um, whereas in past positions, I have needed a little bit of both. Um, I am not uh, a certified captain. I don't have a captain's qualification, so I've always been a crew member um, or just assisted with driving. So those are just a few examples of reasons why you wouldn't need to have those certifications or those kinds of experiences. It depends on the job. It depends on what you do. It depends on where you are. Um, but not every marine biologist uh, spends their time underwater or out on the water. Assumption number four about being a marine biologist is that all marine biologists love math and they love the hard science courses. Um, absolutely not. When I was in school, I hated math, especially math. I could get on board with the sciences because I thought it was interesting. I felt like it was a little bit more practical. Um, however, maths was not my strong suit. I really, really struggled. Um, I had to work twice as hard and be twice as motivated in order to come out at the same result as some of my more mathematically inclined uh, colleagues at school. Um, so I always felt like I was at the back of the pack and I would always question like, is science, environmental science or marine science is something I really want to do if I don't like math? Like, is this, is this going to um, be a bad career choice? Um, that being said, if you are in high school or college right now and you're really, really suffering and struggling with your math and science courses, it's okay. It's not just you. Um, a lot of marine scientists and environmental scientists that um, are taking that field, they, a lot of us struggled with that. It doesn't mean that you can quit, like you can't just not take them because they are important, I promise, especially statistics, especially chemistries. Um, so you do have to take them, but don't feel like you're the only one that is really struggling with that kind of coursework. I was definitely more artistically minded and creativity minded when I was younger, so I definitely had to work really, really hard in order to get better at it. And then eventually it became more easy for me and more fun for me because I was understanding it better. So keep your chin up. It'll get better, I promise. But not every marine biologist thinks that math and science is fun in school. And last but not least, number five is that all marine biologists choose this career path because it is fun and easy. No. <laughs> okay, where do I even start with this? So first of all, let's clarify. If you are passionate about this field, yes, the fun will come. And there are some really, really fun parts of this job. But there's some really not fun parts of this job as well that not everybody thinks about. Um, it is a very emotionally and physically taxing career. There's a lot of really long and rigorous hours. There's some really grueling work conditions. I personally have lived in places where you have a dirt floor, a thatch roof hut, you're living in a mosquito net, you have to go collect your own food and water or you run out, which is not fun, have no electricity at certain times of the day. Um, so that's just kind of like a small sampling of some of the things that I've had to experience in my uh, early years as a marine biologist. Um, so that can provide a little bit of a culture shock to people. We do get people who are a little bit uh, surprised about that living style. Obviously, I loved it and um, I really thrived in that environment, um, but it's not everybody's cup of tea. So just know it's going to be really grueling living conditions, really grueling hours. Um, especially when I first started, I was working anywhere between like 12, which is already high, up to you know, 12, 16 hours a day. Um, 
which if you haven't worked that long, long of a work day before, there's really no way for me to describe it to you. It's exhausting and you really don't know what it feels like until you work it. Also, it can be very emotionally taxing. Um, so what I mean by that is obviously the ocean, it's, there's a lot of things going on right now um, and it can be really hard to take in. There's, um, you know, we got global warming, you got sea level rise, uh, you got corals that are bleaching, sedimentation, ocean pollution, um, overfishing, uh, shark finning, uh, oh my gosh, there's just an endless number number of things that can really tug at your heartstrings um, and it can be really really hard so a lot of people don't make it through um, you have to be really really dedicated motivated persistent you got to break your comfort zones and you got to be the one that goes over and above in order to make yourself stand out in order to get the job that being said and to clarify that marine biology is a very fun field if you are passionate um, and is very very rewarding um, probably in part to do th with the fact that it is really hard. Um, so for anybody who is very driven about being a marine biologist and they feel like they got what it takes, don't let me dissuade you by telling you that it's not, uh, not fun and not easy. Um, it's definitely not easy, but it can be really, really fun. So that is the top five assumptions of a marine biologist that is not always the case. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. For the record, if you are interested in becoming a marine biologist, by no means is this video meant to dissuade you from that career path, just to give you a little bit more of a realistic uh, idea of what a marine biology field and a marine biology degree actually involves. I don't know about you guys, but university degrees are expensive and I like to have all my ducks in a row and all of my information before I jump into a big financial commitment like that so hopefully you guys are uh, coming out the other end of this video a little wiser about marine biology if you have any questions or any additional assumptions that you want to see if they're correct or not feel free to add that down in the comments below and I'll answer those for you guys um, and if you like this video give it a big thumbs up thank you guys so much for joining I'll see you guys around next time mahalo